if someone says to you, right, I can, we can take away spinal bifida, we take away all the pain, anything that you've got, yeah. and you can, you know, you'll run a marathon tomorrow. Yeah. There's gonna be a massive part of you that's like, fucking wave that one now, you know? But then also, are you, are you losing your identity? Welcome everybody to episode 19 of Watch Ross, the one where we've got Sean's car, but no Sean. In fact, he's on the phone. Sean, where are you? I'm behind you. Just like a panto, innit? Let's go. <laughs> Bull. <laughs> Little cinema room. Yeah. Leanne, how are you doing? This is Ross. Right, look at the 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 Leanne. The Leanne. I've heard all about you. Are you all right? Love to see well. you. Good to see you. This is, oh, oh we're doing two. Going, going for two. two yeah. This is Petch. He follows us around with a camera. Petch. Petch. His real name's Lee, but it's not as cool as Petch. Why is why Petch? Because his second name's Petcher. Oh, right. So, like branding. we're giving him a good branding. Petch the Spider-Man. So what's going on up here then? This is all very, are we doing a presentation or what? Tomorrow. We're going to do one every first. Just done a whole run through, let's do it. Oh, what? Do you want to see the opening video? If you could, yeah, give us some opening, opening, opening video here. So, again, I'm very, I'm very happy that you were on episode. I'm absolutely uh, ecstatic. 18. Well, <laughs> and now you're on 19 as well. 19 High as five well. for that. I'm in the new day. I've like a double, a double barrel. You've had a double like whammy. Row, yeah. So, when is it going to be? Leanne, Des Barnes. Like I told her, we're overstaffed. Come on, Des, don't insult me with Skinner, am I right? No. Nope. RG in the hop, all sat here. <laughs> When's that going to happen? Rolling the dice. Sure. Rolling the dice for Rolling De Petch's dice. dice of life. Would he do it? Oh, he'd well be up for it. Yeah. I know Des Barnes would be up for that because I just know. <laughs> <laughs> of course he would. You just have to track him down. <clears throat> I'll speak so to him like, to if he wants down. me to be like Jim McDonald, I'll be fine. I'm going, you know, <laughs> I'll go, Des, it. how does he, awesome. I'll, I'll tell you no more. Get them. They would. Yeah. They would be absolutely Charlie loving it. Charlie lives over in Presbury. He's got a farm shop. You should go and visit him. You're joking? No way, has he? Jim McDonald's got Jim a farm McDonald's shop. McDonald's got the most incredible farm shop. Old McDonald's had a Presbury. farm. This is the best. That's like a, if you're filming, that's a plug for your shop, Charlie. There you go, Charlie. Boom. Right. I can't. Uh, there would be. Uh, it would be a dream. We basically Leanne Des Barnes. What the hell's going on? Jim McDonald's. Jim McDonald's been drinking. Dave Dixon. I've heard a lot about you. None of it's good. And the hop. <laughs> all playing Petch's Dice Petch. of Life. I'm Petch. I can't wait for that. Right, we're gonna go get a coffee. Pfft, anything could happen. Right, we were gonna go and get a coffee. However, we discovered on the way out the eighth wonder of the world. Forget the seven wonders of the world, which are... The Great Wall of China. Machu Picchu, is it? And there's some more. <laughs> and five more. The Grand Canyon, maybe. Yeah, that's one. Um, Watch Ross <laughs> and a few others. The eighth wonder of the world is little balloons inside a big balloon. How did they do that? If you know, let us know. Because right now, we've not a clue. So we're definitely gonna get a coffee now because I'm sick of saying we're getting a coffee and then I was getting distracted. We're now definitely gonna go and get a coffee, but just not here. We're going to my mum's house. You ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Ah, right, let's get this flipping coffee at my mum's house. All right, mum. <laughs> right, there's a dog over here <laughs> taking a pee against my mum's radiator. Ignore that, Sean. It's absolutely fine. Right, finally got my coffee. Like, literally ignore that. Um, got my coffee feeling great now. I just needed that. And I've got a few updates for you. The first one I'm particularly impressed with, right? I can't believe we weren't vlogging on Friday because I went into Lily's on again. Friday again because we don't just go we there. Just go there all yeah. the life, yeah. every we, day. We don't just go there on the vlog. <laughs> it's literally a big part of my life. Dilly, he comes up to me, he's like, Ross, have you been in the last few days? I'm like, well, a few days ago, but not in the last couple of days. He goes, we've got a letter for you. I'm like, no way have you. Turns out he wasn't lying. This bad boy 
arrived at Lily's for me last week. It's addressed to Ross Grant, brackets your regular customer, <laughs> Lily's at Eden. So I'm like, Dilly, is this a wind up? I open it up, what's inside? Valentine's Day card. Happy Valentine's, RG. RG did not just get a Valentine's Day card off his niece this year like normal. He actually got one off somebody signing off as your secret admirer. Hello. Now, Kate Middleton, I think it is you, because you probably watched the vlog before last. It does look like a Queen's handwriting. Definitely looks like a Queen's handwriting. And I'm not going to read the whole letter here, guys, but it basically says that, I mean, this is amazing. You're crying. Well and, up. Yeah, no. It says that I'm basically I'm one of the nicest guys this person knows. So they're saying they know me. True. So I don't know who that is. Thanks, Hop. Is it you? It's not me. <laughs> and then it says that you have strength and confidence, which in turn gives me strength and confidence. But most of all, you have a big heart. So, I don't know who it was who sent this. If it was you, Kate Middleton, keep sending them. Um, whoever it was, I don't mind. I mean, I don't mind, I'm happy about it. <laughs> Thanks very much. And I think this would be amazing, right? I don't know if you want to do this, but I reckon we should do a part of the vlog in the future if anyone takes up this as and a, we're not as even a thing. Run this by Lily's. No, we're, we're, just, for it. we're just going to do this. If you want to get in touch and write some mail in or send something to us you want us to feature on the vlog and have a laugh with, just get it to Ross Grant, brackets your regular customer. I'll put it on the screen now. <laughs> Care of Lilies at Eden, Golden Way, Urmston, Manchester, M41, 0NA. So that's the first update. Thank you, my secret admirer. It's nice, that, isn't it? It's beautiful. But you've got a secret admirer. Nope. Just Petch. He is. It. Maybe it wasn't you, Petch, was it? Was that a wine dog? I was really hopeful when, I, when, when you were opening it, was me. No. It's you. It's for me, not for you. It's obviously it's dressed to RG. <laughs> so the second update I want to I want to like put this guy on the spot about because you were supposed to be wearing your curtains. This is what Hippity Hop looks like with curtains. It's your 1996 style curtains for this episode of the vlog. Why has that not happened? I was in a bit of a rush this morning. Is that it? That's it. Well, I think you should have to on. wear. Well, just you should just go like that now. Whole rest of this vlog, it's just like that. fall into curtains. Yeah, it's, no, it's nice. Straight, it's nice. Straight into the curtain-ish. That's good. So uh, he's gonna be wearing his hair like that for the rest of the vlog. And also, I wanted to give a massive I'm shout out to- any secret admirers with this. Not really. Any actor who has signed up for Bulletproof Factor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success. Registration has now closed. It's a mindset program that I run once a year. I've talked about it on the last vlog and the vlog before. Registration's done. Those actors who took part and are gonna now go on to have coaching with me for the next five weeks, it's gonna be five of the best weeks of your year. Super excited to see you progress through the course and see what you achieve this year. I swear it's gonna be your best year ever. But what it's done is it's brought up a lot of stuff for me, talking to these actors about why they're not more than they are right now, why they're not experiencing more success than they are right now. And it's brought up a lot of like common themes. Yeah. And this ain't just actors, this is like human beings. Everyone in life. Yeah. Everyone, you, you me included, Petch, everyone Where here. Yeah. But just everybody is limited by various things in their life, limiting beliefs around certain areas. And there's so many that are just like universal for every single human being. So we're gonna get some food now, me and you are gonna discuss it. And then we're gonna give you some value today. I don't wanna do any like silly things on this half of the vlog. I just wanna give you value, value, value. We're gonna give a few pieces to camera. And ultimately we're gonna be delivering some fire. No. Straight up fire. Straight up. <laughs> Fire, yet again. <laughs> right, we've moved upstairs to a private room because this is getting serious, right? I've had a little discussion during our meal. And there's a couple of things that I just want to like highlight and I think they're gonna help you if you can get your head around this, okay? A lot of the actors who have come into the Bulletproof Actor community, like I say, they've signed up for the program very recently, have been telling me what they're struggling with right now. And so much of it is them wrapping up their self-worth around accomplishments, awards, achievements, things they're seeing other people have, like little shiny objects, like, for instance, in the acting industry, BAFTAs, Oscars, this, that, and the other. And like, if I don't have that, and I'm not walking down that red carpet last night at the BAFTAs, I feel like shit and I'm worthless, okay? Me and the hop want to just give you a few stats that are hopefully going to help you break from this nonsense, okay? First of all, the BAFTAs, the Oscars, whatever it is, it's one night, ultimately, of your life. How many years is the average person living for, Hop? We're gonna say 75. 75, and that's conservative, because I think people in these days are living a lot longer than 75. So let's break that down, we've got some sums. 75 years is approximately, well not approximately, it's exactly uh, 27,375 days, all right? And loads of people in here are focusing on one day, two days, a few days, out of. Every other day means nothing. Yeah, going, oh, well 99% of my day is a bullshit and don't count. Yeah. That's the first thing, right? So if you're 25, you've got roughly 18,250 days left. 
If you're 50, you've got 9,125 days left. And even if you're getting on a bit and you're like 65, which is still so freaking young, you've got 3,650 days left conservatively. Stop wrapping all of your self-worth up around a couple, a week, two weeks or whatever, few days of your life, all right? Second thing is, these things like the BAFTAs, like the Oscars, mm -hmm. etc. the same in music, I imagine, the Brits, you know, Grammy Awards. In any industry that you're clinging onto one accolade. Yeah. They're, they're voted for, though, by like six and 7,000 people. Yeah. Something like that. There's 7.5 billion people on the planet. So if you are only out to impact or impress six and a half, 7,000 people in your life, you've lost anyway. Yeah. And you're also missing out on... 99.9999999% of the rest of the world. We've got a sum for you here that we worked out in our heads, not. And the population at 7.5 billion means that that 7,000 people who you're out to impress to give you one of these shiny statues is actually equates to what, Hop? 0.0000093. 333 recurring, right? So less than 0.0000001% of the planet. And you're like, oh, if they don't think I'm great and they're not giving me an accolade to say how amazing I am they're and they're applauding me, then I'm worthless. It's bullshit. Like seriously, get out and just look at how you can impact. You can impact well more than 7,000 like people anyway. by a grain of sand on a beach. Literally, yeah, absolutely. You go, you know what? That one grain of sand is way more important than the rest of this beach. It's bullshit. Sort it out and start focusing on what matters. Fire. Just giving you a little tour of the Marriott whilst we find the place. To rest our rumpus. To rest our rumpus. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Go on, Fetch. Do you want a tea or what? Rump. building yourself and you can come together and choose to be with one another choose as in like, i don't need you you don't need me but we choose that's the relationship that that i want anyway you know rather than i don't want a girl who, who's like oh I, I need you you make me feel happy and you do all this stuff for me without you i'll be nothing it's a bit like Ugh. i think that's why people feel suffocated and they want to leave relationships that are like that there's nothing or they get addicted to just a feeling within it a yeah or a... well this is it right so this is the thing with relationships that i try to explain to people and someone described it to me, I told you about this, about fish love. Yeah, no, you are. Yeah, so fish love is like people who say, oh, I love fish. And it's like, well, actually, you don't, do you? Because you say you love fish, and but. Fish and chips. Yeah, but it's on your plate, it's dead, and you're eating it. You don't love fish at all. You love the way the fish makes you feel. You love the taste of the fish. You love what the fish gives you. You don't love the fish. And a lot of people's relationships are like that. They don't love the person. They love what the person brings to the table, the financial security, you know, the. the I don't know, this sense of certainty or, you know, the adventure or variety or whatever it is. They love that rather than the thing. So they're in love, not with the person, but with the idea of the relationship, which is where stuff crumples and falls down. Well, they say, they, they say don't they, like, there's, there's a study that shows which... Oh, cheers, mate. Thanks. Amazing. Uh, this guy. Tea. Who drinks tea? Do, really. Honestly, it's yes. a bit boring that patch. Really? You. Are you a tea drinker as tea well? Drinker. Have you tried coffee though, like yeah. properly? As in, like you've got, you've had a caramel latte. I've uh, tried a caramel latte. It's too sweet. Really? It's really oh, too I, sweet. I don't think it can be coffee. too sweet. I know coffee's bitter as it is, but it just, it just makes it too sweet. So you not put sugar in your tea? No. Look at that. It's a. It's hardcore, isn't it? He's a hardcore tea drinker, and so is this guy. The tea team. Exactly. I just. Well, look, I'm good for now. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. I love coffee, but I don't just love what coffee gives me. I like to give back to the coffee. <laughs> what we actually came here for was to work on a presentation that you saw Sean working on with Leanne earlier on in the vlog. But Sean's keynote isn't working on his Mac, so we're now going to head back to mine, get my MacBook, the one that works. I don't know why you have such bad luck with Mac stuff. It just doesn't like you, does it? Steve Jobs is just like... <laughs> Get like down, Sean. Works. No, he loves me though. <laughs> so we're going to go and do that now, and then I'm going to ring Ruth Maidley because the plan is for me and Petch to go and meet with Ruth tomorrow to talk about how me and Ruth can hook up for this documentary that you saw me speak about with Steve on the last <laughs> vlog for the BBC. Um, and yeah, we're going to get Ruth on the vlog. It's going to be interesting. So let's finish up our latte. As you finish your nuts, <laughs> and let's get Sorry out. Nuts. Let's get out of here. <laughs> 
Ruth Maidley, Ross Grant. Aha, uh -huh, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. We've been uh, we've been all over the place doing a bit a bit of vlogging today, and I was like, you know what? This is about time. In this episode, we get Ruth Maidley on the vlog. How are you fixed for tomorrow? Do you want latte? Shall we talk about taking over the world and all our amazing documentaries we're going to film for the BBC? That is the plan. Me, Sean and Petch are going to call this part of the vlog like a day. We're going to call a day a day. Hope you've had some value out today. We've been doing a lot of pieces to camera today where we try to give people value as opposed to just doing like little funny things that we normally do. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that, viewers. We'll see you bright and early, 10.30 to be exact, where we, the next time, you know what, next time, no, actually no, because we're going to do some cutaways in the car. A few shots from now, <laughs> you will be seeing Ruth on the vlog. Ruth, what do you say to the people watching? Hello, I'm so excited to hang out with my good friend Ross. Be awesome, very excited, can't wait to see you all. Just tell them you'll see him tomorrow. Hey. Just say I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> totally see you tomorrow. Totally, actually we won't, we'll see you in like three seconds. Follow me on any of my social media accounts. Uh, Pets, you better start following Ruth on social saying. media. Just Thumbs saying. up. All right, everybody. What did I tell you? A couple of shots, not of anything like shots, a couple of camera shots. And it's Bath the nominated actress, Ruth Mailey in the house. Ruth, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm really, I'm, you know what? I'm really I'm good. Coffee, we've, good. Got, we've got vats of coffee and we've got loads of ideas about what we're, gonna, what we're basically going to do to take over the TV oh, industry. Yeah, taking over the world, not just the TV industry, the world. Literally, the world. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've met Ruth here in the Trafford Centre really to talk about some ideas for the BBC documentary you saw me talk to Steve about on the last episode. I know you didn't get to hear any of the audio of that, but we want to throw some ideas around of how really we can become the, the disabled Ant and Deck of, of TV. Just take over. Antonia and... Yeah, Antonia and... What, yeah, what would we be called? Let's just stick with Ross and Ruth. Yeah, Ross... It's actually, Ross and Ruth is better, isn't it? It sounds good. Double R. We could really get good. someone to knock up a nice I graphic like for that. Yeah. If you want to knock up a logo for Ross and Ruth or Ruth and Ross, mm -hmm. there's no hierarchy here. I do think Ross and Ruth sounds better than Ruth and Ross. Well, you know, I don't mind being top of the bill, Ruth, to be honest. Absolutely fine. Um, I want to talk to Ruth about loads of stuff. So I'm going to leave the camera running and then we're going to just cut in like the most interesting parts of this conversation because there's things that I want to talk to Ruth about that relate to what I spoke to you guys about yesterday on the vlog. And I think it's be really interesting to hear straight from the horse's mouth, not your horse, Ruth. <laughs> just about what we spoke about yesterday, things like the BAFTAs and the Oscars and all these nominations and all this kind of stuff going on, how your life changes or how it doesn't mm. when you, uh, you, you win one of these accolades or get nominated for one of these accolades. So Petch, keep the camera running. We're going to throw some crazy ideas around and hopefully we're going to give people some crazy value, Ruth. Absolutely. You have to shout into this mic because I'm the only one mic'd up. Give it a test. Well, hello. There you go. Maybe a bit loud. Is that, is that too, too much? <laughs> Might be a bit too much. Um, but yeah, rock and roll. Let the fun commence. Right, excellent, Ruth. <laughs> so, see, that was out of my peripheral vision. I didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> you were nominated for the lead actress opposite yep. Sheridan Smith, Claire Foy, Saran Jones, right? People are going to think, oh my God, like that's it then. When you've got a nomination, you've won, life must change, everything's amazing, you become a millionaire. Like, it ain't like that, is it? What's the I'm reality? Not a millionaire, guys. Not a millionaire at all. You know what? I think after receiving that, and for, for me, it was so unexpected. Yeah. And like, Don't Take My Baby was my first lead role. Yeah. So it kind of all happened literally overnight. And then afterwards, you're like, oh my god i have so much to live up to and i can't right okay i, I put so much pressure on myself to think well i have to be nominated next year I yeah have to be nominated the year yeah year. yeah yeah it didn't happen yeah so don't get nomination after nomination well what happens right just the brutal reality what happens when you get when you get nominated and you don't win i mean does it suddenly before you get when you're nominated press 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 mm. press everyone's to talk to you oh my god you're the, you're the you're the darling of the industry oh saran jones has won bang forget you Ruth. is it like that or do you still do you, do you find like suddenly the like, interest stops i think you feel a little bit like that but i think that's a personal thing as well yeah i think you to be honest with you there's always how much can we swear in this by the you way swear as much as you want really to be honest i try there's, and limit it but it's up to you there is a lot of bullshit. yeah there's a lot of oh you're amazing you're this that and the other you're fantastic you're this that and the other yeah and if you know if you're the kind of person to let that go, go to your head, head 
it, you you will be in for a massive fall afterwards. Yeah, for me and you, making and, and you know being in Don't Take My Baby was the fun, was the steak, okay, not the sizzle. The sizzle's the BAFTAs, the steak, the main meal, and is making it, and that's what people need to enjoy, not this thing in the distance, this accolade. Absolutely, I never in a million years even expected to get nominated. I was keeping absolutely everything crossed that the piece The drama would, would get, get, and it did, and it won. And it won. High only five. won the best, oh, out my peripheral vision again. <laughs> Boom. Like it's only the best single so drama. I think, yeah, I, I was just keeping everything crossed. I mean, you know, we did it on, Shoestring, yeah. Budget. The, we had a really small cast and crew. It was it was so tiny. This little tiny drama. Yep. And when you saw how you saw how hard everyone worked on that. Yep. Everybody worked like children horses. Yep. To get that made and to tell the story because it was so important and it was real. Yeah. So I was just keeping everything crossed for everybody that it got recognised for everybody's efforts and yep. never in a million years expected to be nominated individually. So for me that was kind of a I can't even call it a bonus because it was just so unexpected. Yep. It was it was like, oh well this is different. You're instantly known. Yeah. Back to know who you are. And I, at first, I felt a massive sense of, oh my good God, I've got so much to live up to. Yeah. How do you deal with that pressure then now? Do you still, you don't feel that now? Um, I'd be lying if, some days I do, some days I do, definitely. I think it's, um, you have to, it's all the mindset stuff. Yeah. I learned so well from you. I will sort your mind out, Ruth, it's no true. problem. I would love to see what it's like to have peripheral vision. I don't even like, I'm so in awe of people when I'm in a car and they reverse into a space. I know it sounds mental, but I'm like, how do you even That's like, oh, how do you I have that well spatial awareness? <laughs> I'm like, how do you have that spatial awareness? Yeah, yeah, yeah To be yeah. To, you know, just walking around here is hard yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, so I would love to experience that. I mean, I, it'd be like being born again to go, oh my God, I can drive, yeah. I can do all this sort of stuff, but yeah. equally, Am I going to lose all the fight that I've got inside of me to do it? Yeah. If someone says to you, right, I can, we can take away spina bifida, we take away all the pain, anything that you've got, yeah. and you can, you know, you'll run a marathon tomorrow. Yep. There's going to be a massive part of you that's like, fucking wave that one now, you know? But then also, are you, are you losing your identity? I mean, yeah. what? It's, it's, I'm torn. So for me, if somebody, I can, I can hand on heart say this. If somebody says to and me, no bullshit, no, no bullshit, bullshit, not not like to be no, noble, no, no bullshit. No, no bullshit, not being noble, not being inspirational or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> fuck the inspiration. Like <laughs> Honestly, if somebody said to me, I'll take it all the way, I'll be like, no, you're all right. Man. Really? you just be like, no, With this is me. Every drop of me. I would never have got the part in Don't Save My Baby if I didn't. Yeah, no, well, no BAFTA, that's what I mean. So, so you, no, no, it, no BAFTA award, uh, well, no BAFTA nomination, no Breakthrough Brit, none of that yet. That, I think for, for me, it would be like, well, if it wasn't this, it'd be something else. Yeah. And I'm healthy, I'm well, and I think every bit of challenge that we all experience leads on to how we attack the next challenge. Hey, when I said keep the camera going, I don't mean like, literally, no, you, you're going to go. And it's time for, oh, I'm getting old. It's time for that part of the vlog we like to call... Are you ready for this? I'm ready. He's born ready. Petch, roll the dice. Here we go. I hate the noise. Don't do that to me, honestly. It makes me want to punch people, and I'm not a violent man. <laughs> Uh, what is it, Petch? It's five. It's a five. Um, five. Oh, we've had five before. Wait a sec. It uh, doesn't mean we can't have it again. Don't worry about it. Five corresponds to career and business hop. Oh, perfect for us. Perfect. Go on, Petch. What's your question this week? So, I like the way he just—he just—he just, he just, like, he just knows, doesn't he? He just knows. He knows. Well, it's so. something I've been thinking about quite a lot. Uh, he, think, he thinks a lot, Petch. Especially he does with think a lot. <laughs> Go on, especially what? Especially with an acting career. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and it's funny because I was looking at, you know, on Facebook today, you have that on this day thing that yep. comes up. Something that I posted on this day last year, and I've been thinking about it this year, so it's kind of a recurring theme. So what is it, Badge? It's... Get on with it. We've only got four minutes. Yeah, come on, he's got a call. <laughs> it's when do you give up 
chasing the dream and oh, just God. leave it as a dream. Oh shit. God, this is, are you thinking of giving up, Patch? Well, it's, it's been something I've been thinking about. Genuinely? With, with the acting, yeah. Like, shit. So, wow, this is, all right, bro, this, no, this is actually serious, this, this hop. This isn't like a, just a, a theoretical question then. Um, what's your opinion, first of all? Not you, Hop. I'm talking to Patch. <laughs> so it's, I always come back to that image on Facebook of the guy uh, digging for, for diamonds. diamonds. I'll put that on the screen now. It's where one guy is like two strokes away from getting it, turns it back and another one's nearly there. So I'm like, do I just keep going? Like it took Morgan Freeman till he was like 50 odd before he made it. Um, Harrison Ford was late in his 30s when he made it. Do I just keep plugging along, plugging along? Or do I go, actually I've not had any auditions for a while. Am I that good? Am I just kidding myself? Should I concentrate on something that I actually love. Do you really want to give up? As in like, is it making you so freaking miserable? The thought of you walking away from this and never doing it again sits okay with you. You know, and if it does, then walk away, find something else. If it doesn't, because I've had this, this before, where I've thought, could I live without this? And I've always gone, no, I can't. It's something that's brought me back time and time again. And the thing is for me is it's not that I want to give up. It's I just need more patience. What's your thoughts, Hop? So my dream, if I go back to childhood, my dream growing up was to be a footballer. Mine was to be right? a transformer. That, yeah. that definitely couldn't happen. <laughs> but but when did I give that up? I, you know, I, I, it's still a part, I'm not giving that up still. It's still a part of me. The, the summer comes along and I think, right, well, if I do a good seat, a good pre-season, <laughs> I can get a team in September and I can still do it. So I don't think ever give up on your dream and, and I think all. I think for me mate right is it, it's actually what do you class as being a footballer what do you class yeah. as being an actor because if, if your dream if you're saying my dream is to be an actor you freaking hit it already you are an actor yeah. you are a footballer because you, you know you're so fortunate you've got legs that work hop you can go and kick a ball about there's lots of people who can't even use the legs who would dream of being able to play football terribly the dream should be internal really on a feeling and everything that you've got around you not like material things not an attachment to one certain thing it should be just a feeling of joy and happiness and where where are you going to get that from and and, and, and that, that comes back to that gratitude and i want to end on this so we're not going on forever yeah. but i want to end on end on this everybody who's watching this vlog 99 percent of the audience anyway are going to have been born in a developed country within the last i don't know i don't know how many how, how, how old our, our viewership is but like you know within the last 80 years <laughs> You know, ultimately, if you were born a human being on the planet within the last 80 years, you have never, as a human race, had it better than it is today. Yeah. You already won the freaking lottery when you were born. And if you can't yeah. get your head around that, that's why you have lost. Yeah. So you're already, you're already a winner. Hop, it's been Hop, a pleasure having you back on. You're already living the dream. We're all living the dream. Are you dream, staying in the game, Petch? I'm staying in the game. Boom, staying in the game. <laughs> right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. The theme of this vlog has been quite kind of like like uh, career central, hasn't it, really, I guess, and, and Oscars and BAFTAs and all that sort of stuff. Um, massive shout out to anybody who's, who's up for any awards. Um, I hope you win them, but don't worry about it if you don't, like it does not define who you are. We're definitely gonna win award for the top vlog of 2018. Uh, we will see you guys on episode 20, crikey, 20 of Watch Ross next time. Until then guys, three, two, one, bye for now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. Diet Coke break. I'm gonna take my top off in a minute, Petch. See how they like that.